Hi there, my name is Felix Beck, and the rabbi from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe. Ring the little bell so you are notified when new videos drop. And good news! There's good news. There's a, a new Doctor Who short story was released. Uh, was it yesterday, day before, to entertain us? The the the, the huddled matters as we cower inside our uh, socially distanced, isolated homes from one another. Keep us occupied in these in these very long, weird days. Uh, so, bit of good news. I like it. Thank you very much. Bad news. It's a Jodie Whittaker story written by a current era writer. So I was like, oh, I think I'll give that one a miss. Then I saw it was written by Joy Wilkinson. So Joy, uh, Joy Wilkinson, I think, is somebody who's actually is genuinely a pretty decent writer. And I think she could actually really genuinely be a pretty good Doctor Who writer. Yeah, you know, that's the reason I, I was I wrote to her. her uh, I wrote, wrote to her recently. I wrote to her agent, wrote to her on on, uh, on Twitter to see if she, she would come on the channel. And talk out our significant differences. Yeah, you know, I didn't hear back, which I thought was a bit of a shame. Yeah, you know, I honestly, I just think it would really probably do do a good to uh, to to have a dialogue with with the other side of this cultural divide. Yeah, you know, I, yeah, you know, I just think having an open discussion about our differences is a good thing. <laughs> yeah, you know, open, friendly, respectful discussion. Yeah, you know, and honestly, I really genuinely think that she that that, that she's a decent writer. And really could be a uh, a decent Doctor Who writer. I think Witchfinders was probably in season eleven the closest it came to being like Doctor Who uh, for for the entire season. Yeah, I think it's probably the closest uh, closest um, uh, it came. Yeah, I, 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 obviously it was significantly handicapped with uh, Whitaker's bizarre performance, making the Doctor into like this utter utter idiot whenever she can. Um, it, yeah, it's, but still, even so, it was still the episode that was closest to uh, um, being Doctor Who. And also, I, I, yeah, I got to know Joy from from uh, her, her commentaries on the classic Doctor Who Blu-rays, which I really find quite in, quite insightful. And it seems to be that she's somebody who both likes and starts to understand Doctor Who from 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 watching these. Uh, um, uh, was it her commentaries on, on on the classic episode? So yeah, I think under a different showrunner, yeah, you know, somebody who could really who could nurture her her, her talent, something like Russell D Davis or or a Moffat, or even a Mark Gattis or a Toby Wire, yeah, even Nicholas Briggs. Honestly, I think w would be able to steer her in the right direction because I think she's eighty percent the way there anyway, maybe even more eighty percent percent the way there anyway. I just think think that Ch Chibnall is such a bad writer that she he steered her in in the wrong direction. So yeah, Joy, if you're watching this, Joy, if you're <laughs> yeah, now now I've talked to you about it. If you're watching this, can you come on the channel? I just think it'll be good for for everyone. I promise. I this will not be a gotcha thing. It'll be. I want to have a genuine, real, meaningful discussion. You know, and I'm not not looking for look looking to embarrass or have an embarrass anybody, have an argument. I'm really not looking for. It. I just want to know. What are you guys thinking? <laughs> and, and yeah, the other thing I would like you to know is what 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 the people on the other side of the the aisle is thinking as well, which is not the caricatured like racist and sexist or whatever that 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 uh, we're often portrayed as being, which is just completely insane. Um, so yeah, <laughs> so yeah, if if you can get in contact, that'll be fa fantastic. You know what else will be fantastic? Hit the subscribe button. Can you hit the subscribe button? Because uh, oh, and if you're already subscribed, can you make sure you're still subscribed? I've reached the dizzy heights of my YouTube channel. That YouTube is unsubscribing members for me. So mwah, thank you, YouTube. But if you subscribe, can you hit the subscribe button again? If you need to become unsubscribed, can you can you hit the subscribe button again? Can you? Uh, Hit the like button, the share button, all those things are fan dabby double dozy, and I'm genuinely, genuinely very, uh, 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 very grateful. I give stuff away on the channel each week to show show my gratitude. Go to the video notes; it'll give you all the information you need need to win whatever way. What I'm giving away this week is Lord of the Rings, the Fellowship of the Ring, the first of the Peter Jackson Lord of the Rings movie. Fantastic set, wonderful packaging. Uh, it's got uh, it's an extended edition. Got two discs on the extended edition, and I've got two discs of extras. It's just great. All you need to do to win it is subscribe to the channel, which is the reason I'm doing this. Subscribe to the channel, and then leave the hashtag uh, #treebid. Hashtag #treebid. It will do the giveaway on the Tardis Zone on uh, what's it? Sunday. I think it's April 26. I think that, and then we 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 pick another uh, uh, DVD to uh, DVD or whatever or Blu-ray to give away. Next week. Also, there's a Doctor Who audio adventure starring Nicholas Briggs as the Doctor, also in the video notes. Go help yourself. Have fun. Okay, so the story in question is called the called the Simple Things. It's a uh, it's as I said, it's a Jodie 
Graham Yazam Ryan story, and I think very cleverly focuses on Graham, who I think uh, through Bradley Walsh's performance more than the writing has developed into a real character. You know, you know that approximates a human being, uh, which yeah, Yaz has not managed as yet. You know, but okay, keep 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 trying. Uh, so just to be clear, this is not a recommend at all. You know, for me, it was much more of a curio. Like the the Paul Cornell Thirteenth Doctor, so I can't say Thirteenth Doctor because the, because the Jodie Doctor has no numbering because the idiot timeless children. So yeah, I, I, you know, again for me, just I just decanonized this whole era because of that. But okay, whatever you want to do. Um, so it's much yeah, it was much more of a of a curiosity. What would this era of Doctor Who be like without Chris Chibnall's you know influence throughout? Which I think this is probably uh, probably is. Yeah, so again, so again, much like the 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 Paul Cornell story, somebody who has a pedigree writing really, really good Doctor Who. All that to tell you, uh, Paul Cornell is a, a total tool as well. You know, great do great Doctor Who writer though he is, he's also an idiot. Uh, he's always simpering around the idiotic uh, writers and artists that destroyed the comic book industry. You know, by the way, did you know? I was just looking up. You know, Superman sells about thirty thousand copies a month. Superman in a country of 328 million. That, I mean, that's just, it's, it's insane. They should be selling 300,000 copies a month. I, I just think maybe you want to find a way of connecting to your audience and not trying to say, oh, we want a totally different audience. And that, that might be the way to go, you know, to go, go about it. So, as I said, so, you know, even though I love, um, I love Paul, Paul Cornell's work, I love Human Nature, I love his book, I love Human Nature, I love Family of Blood, I, 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 uh, I wouldn't be joining the, 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 uh, the watch along. This uh, this Friday night, even if it wasn't on the Jewish Sabbath, which prohibits me watching it anyway, I wouldn't be dropping on because you know he's just a tool. And screw you, I I I don't think you need. Um, I just don't feel a, a desire or want to support you, especially following your your thoughts on Twitter. I find your Twitter feed really quite um, exceptionally vile. So you know, so so I, I, I yeah. The, fortunately, it's on the Jewish Sabbath, so so I, I, I it's not even a quandary for me. Anyway. So the story is about Graham wanting to go and see West Ham in the 60s before they win, I think, the, the FA Cup and having a bit of a kick around with the, 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 the cup winning team. So my first question was, I really didn't understand is how, if let's say Jodie Wizard's doctor takes her to the 60s, whenever it was in the 60s, to the right time and location, uh, that, the profession, that this professional football team uh, is is in just before they have this big important title game. Title game. Why does that mean he'll be able to kick a ball around with them? Like, like I, I don't understand. You know, I like there, there, there's a bit of story missing there about how that would happen. But you know what? It doesn't matter because they don't end up there anywhere. They end up in uh, 1896 instead, and um, they go to the football club that would uh, that would later become West Ham. It's called the Thames Fireworks uh, FC Football Club. So, again, my first thought there was, like, oh, bloody hell, it's football, bloody soccer, which, uh, along with most sports, just bores me to tears, bores me to death. You know, if, if you like me and you grew up in the 70s and 80s and you were a Doctor Who fan, as, as I was, you know, you viewed Doctor Who as, like, the alternative to soccer. You know, you, you kind of viewed soccer as, like, the enemy of geeky fandom. And... Uh, and yeah, I I yeah, I really never understood at all why it was bang bang. I'm not sure if it's the same now. In the seventies and eighties, they would look at Doctor Who fans. They were like, "Oh, you silly moron! <laughs> look at you! Yeah, you know, really take you seriously." And then they'll go so crazy about football. Like, ah, we won! Wait, you didn't do anything. You sat, you sat at home, <laughs> or you sat and sat. You didn't do anything. And like, yeah, like to me, it looks like somebody's kicking a ball. It doesn't look that impressive. Like, I, I have a friend who's really into baseball, and like, he gets so into it, which is like, I actually enjoy his love of it. But to me, it's like, he hit a ball with a stick! He hit a ball with a stick! Well, I find, you know, Doctor Who actually, actually has a story arc, you know, or, or, you know uh, drama has a story arc, it actually has something to say about life. I, just, I don't get football at all. But okay, I understand a lot of people do, but I, when I saw football, I was like, oh, really? That's like the anti-Doctor Who. But, okay, <laughs> I understand, uh, you know, times may well have changed, okay, and I can, I can live with that, okay, I can move on. So the story takes us to this mysterious locked factory building uh, that the, uh, the, the, the soccer team needs to get into so they can practice before their big game. 
So at this point, I'm like, oh, God, who cares? Who cares about any of this? Oh, my God. And then, uh, but I thought it was nearly over. So I'm like, okay, I can make, make, I can make it through. Uh, and then when they get the doctor breaks into the building, they find like, a a hidden draconian warship being built there by uh, by this uh, um, factory. This is this what was it? It was a metalwork uh, metalworks factory. So uh, and it was hidden by a perception filter. Fine. So so then we get something that's really, really, really out of character for Jodie Whittaker's doctor. Really out of character. She has an opportunity, a really glaring opportunity to be a virtue signaling idiot. And she isn't. Which, again, so this could never happen on TV. Yeah, making me think a lot of the, uh, the a lot of that stuff is really injected in by, by, by Chibnall. And, and yeah, I just think the bottom line is, uh, is that he's just, uh, you know, he would do something that that idiotic and stupid because I think that's what he's like. I think he's just, you know, you know he's just dumb. He's just a dummy. I mean, yeah, honestly, looking at the scripts of season 11, especially season 12, yeah, how do you not see the massive plot holes you put in every freaking episode? How do you not see it? I think, I don't think it can be uh, uh, just a lack of talent or laziness, which I'm sure he's pretty darn lazy to us. We, you know, we, yeah, we just watched Journey's End. Stolen Earth, uh, was it, the, on Sunday. It was absolutely it was glorious. A wonderful evening. But, yeah, it, it wasn't lost on anybody watching it that Russell T. Davis did 13 episodes of Doctor Who, was it, I think, 13 episodes of Torchwood and Sarah Jane Adventures all at the same time. That's somebody who's not late. And we're, uh, uh, each year, you know, and uh, Chibnall can maybe squeeze out 10 really bad episodes of Doctor Who once every two years. So, you know, that does sound lazy. But I don't think lack of talent and laziness really uh, explains it, like, yeah, explains how bad it is. I think you've got to, like, put, I think you just got to put in there, he's just not very clever. You know, not very clever people don't notice plot holes. I just think that's where he is. Yeah, and I think him not being very clever is probably why he... Uh, uh, he he portrays a doctor, his doctor, to be a moron as well. So it's something so he can like he, he maybe that's him getting representation on the screen. <laughs> so yeah, I was fully expecting a Jodie Whittaker lecture on how war is wrong and start virtue signaling. Oh, you can wreck a planet, or you can save it. Oh, I'm feeling a bit socially awkward. You know, there were the other greatest hits of Jodie Whittaker. Oh God, she's so awful. Uh, uh, but she steps out of character and has some, you know, and something that I don't think the the, the Jodie Whittaker Doctor I've ever seen her do before. She has some thoughts. She thinks things through, which again, I've ne just never seen this Doctor doing. You know, she, um, <laughs> you know, she realizes that um, uh, that that, that the, the Ironworks, the guy in charge of the Ironworks, is uh, is actually just looking out for his employees, making sure everybody can be employed and working and the draconian he meets her that they're building a draconian ship there uh, is a is a simple clerk and they're going to build the warships anyway so lecture and really isn't going to make any difference and you know you know if she really wanted to have one really clever thought which a doctor really i think should try and have is that you know there are lots and lots of bad people in the world lots and lots of bad people and in extension i assume there's lots and lots of bad people in the doctor who universe so without a military those bad people who are very bad, are going to kill you and enslave you. You know, they, they, it's not like ISIS or Hamas or whoever are, are very coy about their goals. And it's not like, you know, the Zygon invasion, Zygon inversion, where Capaldi can make a this really good anti-war speech and they all go, oh, okay, then let's stop, let, let, I'll stop trying to kill you. No, 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 no. They're really invested in trying to kill you. Yeah, no matter how good a speech you make, they're not going to stop doing that. But of course, the, the, the media is completely occupied by a, a particularly moronic part of society that just doesn't like to deal with the realities that there are different cultures have like moral differences and have different outlooks, uh, and yeah, because they get scared. They but somebody they say something's different. You go, oh, that's being racist. Oh, that's being racist. And they get they get all scared, so they can't deal with it at all. But yeah, that's really you know the reason you need a military presence to protect yourself. All right, so Graham gets his uh, his, his his kick around with with, with the football team, and uh, and the draconian gets the ball as a gift to give to the emperor. Now, as an aside, they uh, they did get the law wrong a bit. So you know, I think if if Pete Matik was was helping her out, he screwed up. But whoever it was, screwed up. We we know from Frontier in Space, which was Frontier in Space was in the twenty sixth century, and the uh, 
the Poetry Doctor references the 15th e uh, uh, Emperor of, of Draconia. Uh, and they say, oh, that was 500 years ago. So it's the 26th century. Then it's the 21st century. The 15th century was in the 21st century, which is a good, which is a good at least 100 years before, uh, after this short story. And when she's talking about, about uh, 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 Draconia, she references the 15th Emperor as if it was something in the past, uh, when it really should have been in the future. <laughs> you know, but okay, fine, whatever, screw that. But yeah, I think the real error, and I think the real point that this story actually misses is uh, it just ends it ends at the wrong place. It ends too quickly. Yeah, you know, the soccer ball ends up being given to the the dr uh, draconian to be uh, to given to the 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 emperor as a gift, and the doctor ends up musing how not everything is a life and death struggle for you know uh, for to save the universe or save Earth. Sometimes you just have a simple kick around with a ball, which yeah, okay, it's quite nice. But you know, if you actually had a bit of a coder at, at, at the end of it, where uh, the where the ball football was somehow instrumental. In forming a uh, draconian human alliance in the future, that would have been really fun and clever. I'm but it's the doctor, but oh well, what can you do? So you know, it's not a bad little story. It's not a bad little story. Again, Wilkinson, I think is a is a is a is a pretty solid and talented writer. I just wish she had better directions. You know, it's comp the story is completely skippable. You do it as is the entirety of Jodie Whitt Whittaker. Here. I am documenting it so you don't have to, okay? That's why I'm here. I'm documenting it so you don't have to, and I find it incredibly painful <laughs> as I do. I can't, you know, season 12, I said to myself, it's going to be like, it's like nine and a half weeks. Oh, nine and a half weeks. Yeah, no, that, that's the movie I've watched instead. It was like nine and a half weeks. How hard can it be? It was freaking torture. So, yeah, completely skippable, as I feel the entire era is. Uh, but, you know, an interesting insight on, on what this era could have been without the significant, real, and genuine drag factors that both Chibnall and Whitaker represent. My name is Sheila Beckin, the rabbi from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe. Ring the little bell so you're notified when new videos drop. And have yourself a fantastic day. Yeah!